Hello, welcome to LetMeBoreYouToSleep.com This is Let Me Bore You To Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And this features <coughs> the background sounds of Andre the Ferret. Andre Dooley Newland who, until I pressed record, was in the bedroom doing something. That he enjoys. And, uh, you can hear that background sound. That's him climbing through his tube. He's got a plastic tube. And he's climbing through it. I think he likes it because it was a tunnel. Hey, where are you? you come give me cuddles. Let's see if he give me a cuddle. Oh, I don't think he wants to. I'm trying to grab him, but he's he's so quick. Oh, he's trying. He's biting me. Ow! Ow! He's really biting me. It's biting me hard. It's, oh God! I have got him. <sighs> what are you biting me for, baby? <sighs> Basically, he bites. It's when he's playing. But he bites, not hard, hard, you know. If he bit me hard, then it would be <laughs> very painful. Oh, he's let a smell off as well. He's a little, every, what they do, well, I'm not an expert on ferrets. I'm an expert on this ferret. But ferrets, they let stinks off. They basically... It's their their glands, and different times he seems to let it off. Sort of if he's, if he's excited, or if he's angry, or um, let's say if there was another ferret in the room, he would let off a pong. You know, it'd be the first thing he'd do. They'd both let off pongs, a little pong bomb. He, wanna, he wanted to go. He's gone. And he did it last night when my friend's dog was up here. And he hasn't let off a stink for a while. But he just done one just then. But it was a little one. It was probably when he, when he was biting me, he probably let off that kind of... Uh, he was in his little fighty mode. When I was so when he was little though, when I first got him, he'd be letting off stinks all the time, like proper. You know, I had to open the windows. <laughs> really bad smells, not farts. You know, that's me. But he he was letting off. It's it's hard to explain what it smells like, but different smells. But once one day he climbed up on me. And that's him in the background. Now he's eating his food. He's got some dry food. So you've got some lovely background music. Is Andre eating his dry food. And, uh, and he does that. And the reason he does that is because he basically inhales the food because it's dry and they're pellets. They look a little bit like rabbit poo but very hard they're like really big vitamins do you know the big vitamins that are just a bit too big to swallow but you can do it but it's just a bit oh, I wish they were a little bit smaller now that's a that's a sentence that no one's ever said to me I wish it was smaller so they he 
I think he gets it caught in his throat and he kind of sneezes and chokes and pushes it back out again because he'd been so greedy. He was trying to swallow it before it's crunched up. God, I love that little furry poo head. And once when he was little, I remember this because it, I think it only really happened once. He climbed onto me. It was in the summer, I think. Well, it was, I was indoors, so I might have had a T-shirt on. It might not have been summer. Because sometimes, um, even in the winter, if I've got the heating on, then I can wear a T-shirt indoors. I'm not, I'm not one of those people that wraps up and has the heating off and just sits in the cold and wears, you know, 14 jumpers. I, I don't do that. I've, I've had to do that in the past when I've had no control over the heating or when I've lived in a room without any heating. But no, I don't, don't need to do that now. I think just keep it warm in the winter is a basic thing. Just it's like washing your hands after you've been to the toilet or washing up your plates in hot water, not cold water. It's you know, it's just standard stuff really. It's like having a roof. Having a roof on your house. It's you know, it's not having an essential heating or not having it on is for me, that's like sitting in a house in the winter without a roof. You know, it just it needs a roof. You know, it's nothing like that at all, is it really? Anyway, what he did is he climbed up, and this is the times when he was little, and he could just zip up my leg. He was like a little mouse, but he wasn't a mouse. But he, you know, he moved really quickly, and he just. He could climb up my trousers while I was standing up. Can't do that now. It's too. It's too big. He does sometimes. If I've got like tracksuit bottoms on, he can sometimes get a good cling with his with his toenails and his fingernails, and he can climb up to kind of my thigh, and then I just grab him the rest of the way. His little sneezes. He still does that thing that he did when he was a baby. Like he'll grab food from the bowl and then he'll run to a different part of the room and he'll kind of hide eat. I think he's a. will secretly eat it. I'll oh, just grab one now and he's gone through his, into his little plastic tunnel. I can hear him, he's eating it inside the tunnel. So no one can get to it. As if I'm gonna eat his food. Mind you, my friend's dog does eat the food. But there's always food, I always got spare food that I put back in there. So I don't know, I think it's, because when he was little, when he was a baby, when I first met him, he was, I don't know, five weeks old, four weeks old, something like that. And he was with his brother. I was going to say his twin brother, but... It, you know, if they're born at the same... They're born, you know, the same time or the same kind of time period, then it's going to be his twin brother, isn't it? They didn't look like each other, though. But they... Uh, Andre was kind of being bullied by the other one. And the other one always got to the food first and pushed him out of the way. So I think that's kind of imprinted on him. And because now he's, he's the king, he's the king of the castle. And he has been for. I don't know, nearly four years now. He's got this whole big flat to himself. Well, with me, but I'm his lodger. 
and he's got toys and everything scattered all around. He's, you know, he's he's he, he's got that little um, bath, got a little bath full of dirt as well, which he goes in every day and digs and stuff. So it's basically, if I were moved, if he if he moved out and you know got himself a, a new place, maybe got a girlfriend and got married and had kids and you know decided to move to get his own home, I would suddenly have a lot more space because all of his stuff, all of his toys, and there's a lot of them, would all be they'd just be gone. There'd be no paper on the floor. There'd be. That'd be weird. It'd just be strange. It just. Because that's the only thing is. Having him here, means that the place is. A bit messy. And it's it's all about him. It's all suit set it up. Yeah, set up for him. But once he's once he'd moved out, it'd be all tidy, and I'd get a new carpet and everything. But then he wouldn't be here, and I'd just be here on my own, <laughs> talking to myself, which I guess I am now. But I know I'm not because I know that you know you're listening. But I talk to him. I do every day. At least once, probably more, I'd pick him up and chuck him against the wall. No, I don't. I'd pick him up and uh, I'd give him a big cuddle and tell him how much I love him. And He bites me and says, get off, get off, leave me alone. You can't tell me what to do. And just, you know, give me food, food. I want food. I want more chocolate. Yeah. And he's just, yeah. Anyway, when he was little, he climbed up on me, and I think I just had a t-shirt on, and he let a stink off. He basically let a smell off, which basically it was really powerful. It was a powerful smell. It was one of the worst ones he's, I've ever known him to do. He's done quite a few really bad ones, really smelly ones. And I put him down. I said, oh, open the windows. And uh, luckily the windows are quite big in this flat. Otherwise I'd have to knock a hole in the wall just to get some air in. And then I walked into a different room and the smell was following me. Like, ah, uh, like, what's going on? And I realised it was following me because the smell was on me. He had destroyed the t-shirt. It was literally melting in front of me. It's like, it wasn't, but it was covered. It was invisible, whatever it was that he, that smell, he just rubbed it all over my t-shirt. And it was awful. So I had to take the t-shirt off. So I think, I mean, generally when I normally take a t-shirt off, I pull the the head, you know, the neck bit over my head, and then I take my, what do I do? I think I take my right at, I'm not sure if it's my right arm or my left arm first. I know what I do is I I'm, I'm lift the neck of the t-shirt over my face and then I pull my right arm out so I've got to grab hold of the, the cotton or whatever the material is that uh, comprises the t-shirt and I pull that off over my arm and then I do it with the well, then, once you've done that, it just kind of falls off the other arm. But then it can fall on the floor. So 
it's probably best to kind of grab hold of it so it doesn't fall on the floor because then that saves having to bend over and pick it up although you can flick it up with your foot I mean I think when I was younger if I didn't have any socks on or slippers which I can't walk around with like that now because of him because he likes toes he likes nibbling on them I used to pick up the dirty clothing whether it's a t-shirt or whatever with underpants maybe jeans maybe socks uh, garters bra you know whatever uh, I've just taken off and I'd pick it up with my toes where I basically I would put my big toe and well, I don't know what the toe is that's next to the big toe I suppose like the second biggest toe Unless, of course, you've got... I mean, you've got two big toes, generally. One might be bigger than the other. So the second biggest toe might be the left one. The left big toe. But I think I'd normally use my right foot. Because that is... I mean, I guess... It's not that I'm right-footed. Because normally, you know, we talk about right right handedness or left handedness and I suppose right footed would be probably use that term if or when I was a professional footballer I remember when um, when I played for Man United they used to say when I first joined and they said uh you know, welcome to the to Manchester United. And I said, oh, thank you. I said, uh, what are you looking forward to doing? What are you looking forward to? You know, I said, well, I'm quite looking forward to going on a tram. And they said, why is that? You're, you're joining the, you just joined the world's biggest football team. And, you know, you've just been paid £30 million. And all you want to do is go on a tram. I said, ah, ah, no. I didn't say that's all I want to do. I said, it's a thing that I want to do. If it was all I want to do, that means that I just want to get on a tram and spend the rest of my life on that tram and no 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 that's not how I want to spend my life don't put words into my mouth and he said oh sorry and uh because he had alphabet spaghetti and he was putting it into my mouth I said look I can feed myself well technically I do like it when you feed me but can you not do it during the press conference. He said, oh, okay. Sorry, JJ. And so there's all these reporters and they're asking questions and Doris from the Daily Mail said, uh, hi, JJ, my name is Doris and I'm from the Daily Mail. I said, okay, that's, that's nice. How are you today? She said, oh, terrible. I asked, why? She said, well, I'm not, my name is Doris. And I work at the Daily Mail. How could it be anything but terrible? And I said, oh. And she said, what do you mean, oh? I said, I don't know. I'm not really sure what to say. Because... Um, I don't know, I just, I'm a little bit embarrassed really. She said, why are you embarrassed? I said, well, I kind of agree with you. Doris is a terrible name. She said, well, that's a bit rude. I said, I'm just agreeing with you. She said, well, actually Doris is a, a very popular name. Some of the most famous women in the world are called Doris. 
I said name one. Doris Day. Okay, name two. Doris Stokes. Okay, name name three. Doris. Doris Brown. Who's Doris Brown? She's my best friend's next door neighbour. Yeah, but it's not famous, is she? Well, she is now. This is being filmed, isn't it? This is being, this is being filmed live, and the whole world's watching. So Doris Brown is now a known person. I don't know. Does it does it work that way? She said, well, "Yeah, but you're you're famous." I said, "No, I only class myself as famous." She said, "Well, you just you just signed a big football contract. You're." going to play for the the world's best football team according to Manchester United and you, you are on television live being interviewed by all us wonderful newspapers and you get free donuts oh, okay if well, wait a minute did you say I get free donuts yeah, we all do. We, all the reporters and everyone, we all get free donuts. I said, I didn't get no free donuts. She said, well, yeah, everyone, there was on a table. There was loads of them, different glazed ones, jam. Um, there was one with truffles on, uh, which I thought was a bit extravagant, but didn't stop me eating it. And... Uh, yeah, it was really nice. Cups of coffee, tea, juice, uh, but not juice that you get out of cartons, you know, from uh, the supermarket, but juice as in proper juiced. What do you mean juice? You mean like steroids? No, I mean like steroids. Juiced as in like carrot juice or you know a juicer, a machine, you know, you put vegetables and stuff in and it juices stuff and it's really healthy for you. Ah. Well, where are the donuts? Yep, I don't know. We've, they're all gone, I think. So wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you're telling me that I'm the star of the show. This whole press conference is here because of me. Because the world wants to see me. Because you, all you reporters, want to interview me and ask me questions. And I don't even get a donut. Someone in the back shouted, you are a donut, mate. You are a donut which didn't really make sense. And I said, look, can't, can't I just get a donut? Please. Because I like them. I want a donut. And I started having a tantrum. And I did, I started rolling on the floor and, and just hitting the floor and just like, donut, 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 donut. And, it's just the people laughing and someone chucked an action man at me a naked action man which is a bit weird because I haven't seen an action man since 1980 the idea is it doesn't seem like that's something that you would plan either You know, you're going to work, you're a reporter for a big newspaper. So what, what's, what's my, uh, what job have I got today then, boss? 
Oh, you got a lovely job. And you say, oh, yeah, brilliant job. Uh, you've got to go down to the uh, O2 Arena. Yeah. And you're going to interview JJ, Juicy JJ, who's going to be joining Manchester United football team. Why is, why is it in o, the O2 Arena then in London? Why is it not in Manchester? Well, the reason it's not in Manchester now is because I just said the O2 Arena before thinking about the fact that it was supposed to be in Manchester. So we're we just going to go along with it being in London. Oh, so is there no O2 Arena in Manchester? I really don't know, son. I don't know. Uh, there might be, there might not be. I don't want to say there is, I don't want to say there isn't. There's lots of things I don't want to say, but there's lots of things I do want to say. But this isn't the time for us to discuss that. That's more of a therapy situation. So what I'd like you to do, me old boy, is put your trousers back on and get yourself down there. I'd like you to interview Juicy JJ. Now, you won't you won't be like an interview interview, not one on one. It'll be like a press conference, so there'll be a big table out in front. Um, yeah, and there'll be Juicy JJ will be there. I think the manager of Manchester United, a trainer one of the trainers or the head trainer or something and uh, I think another member of Manchester United might be there as well and yeah and we're going to have a lady um, in a bikini just standing by the table just behind and putting on a fake smile what do you mean? Well, it's, there's a table with people sitting on it, and they sit behind the table so that the the press, you know, the reporters can see them, and the news and the TV cameras can film them. No, I mean, what do you mean? There's a lady in a uh, bikini smiling fakely. Well, yeah, it's uh, just a standard sporting thing. When they have it in boxing, they have it in motor racing. It's just a standard thing. Well, that seems a bit weird. I don't understand why, son. Why is it, why is it weird? Well, what do you mean by, like, well, what, why was she having a fake smile? Well, it's not going to be a real smile, is it? Standing up on stage in a bikini. It's December. And all these people with cameras taking pictures. Guaranteed not all of those pictures are going to be for the newspaper. So, yeah, it's going to be a fake smile. What? What? You mean JJ? No, the, the lady with the bikini. Why don't they have a man in a bikini as well? I don't know. Why don't, why don't you go down there and ask? Ask somebody. Instead of asking me. And one more thing. The next time you want to talk to me. And ask me about your next assignment and all that stuff. And want to have a long conversation. Can you wait until I've finished with the toilet? You just like wait at my office. I'm in the toilet. I don't need to be disturbed. This is one of the only times I get any space normally. Okay, boss. Sorry about that. That's all right. And can you just get out of the cubicle? Okay. There's not enough room in here for the both of us. Come on, go, go. go. Okay, give me a quick kiss. Okay, okay, bye. 
And then he just walks into the office with his, you know. I don't think at any point he's going to say to his colleague, you know what? Do you think it would be a good idea for me to chuck a an action man, like a, you know, at JJ? in case, you know, if he has a tantrum. Well, yeah, if he has a tantrum, possibly, but no, I don't think, you know, I mean, what, it means going out and buying one and or go, getting back into a time machine and going back to 1983 and buying, buying one and why has it got to be naked? Well, I don't know. Why have you got to carry a parachute around with you everywhere you walk? Well, that's my business, though. It's got nothing to do with you. Exactly. We all have our little quirks, don't we? Eh? We all have our little quirks. Come on, Steve. Get out from under the desk. We can see you there. Yeah. Your little quirk will get you arrested, mate. Get off, go on, get on, go, go away, go away. So, in my thinking, he must have actually not bought one, especially for the occasion, but carries one around with him wherever he goes, carries an action man figure which is unusual I think one of the problems of being a professional footballer when I was you know playing for Manchester United City United City United one of them and uh, it was a big commute from London every day and when I joined I thought that's a, it's alright it's not a bad job really you know I work once a week you know for uh, I don't know 90 minutes every, every Saturday maybe once during the week as well depending on during the season um, if it's an away game then you've got to add a few hours onto that for travel but yeah all in all it's a pretty good pretty good uh, gig really and then though I, did, I was really surprised so I, I you know I signed the contract the money went through um, and everything was good and then Monday, about, I don't know, 10 o'clock in the morning, I got a phone call. And it was the trainer saying, Juicy JJ, where are you? I said, what? Jim, where am I? Where are you? Well, you just phoned me on my landline phone number, haven't you? Yeah, well, your mobile was busy. It was switched off. Well, if you just phone me on my landline number, where do you think I am? Okay, I know where you are. You're at home. Yes. Why are you at home? Because I just spent two million pounds buying this property. That's why I'm here. I've just moved all the way from London. And, you know, I've got a lot of unpacking to do. Well, I would do if I was able to get some sleep. And he said, are you still asleep at 9.30 in the morning? I said, it's 10 o'clock, isn't it? He said, I can't remember what time we'd agreed that it was. That's about three minutes ago. I've forgotten. He 
He said, you know, you need to have some con continuity with these stories. You know, he's, it, the problem is the same thing, isn't it, with the, with the news conference, the press conference. Wasn't it originally in Manchester and then it, it became the, at the O2 Arena in London? No one said it was an arena. You wouldn't have it in the arena, would you? But you'd have it at the O2. They do have other rooms, like big rooms for conferences, and I think they've got rooms that can hold like 10,000 people. Are you sure? No, I'm not. But does it matter? Because a lot of people that were listening to this won't even really care. Some of them won't know what the O2 arena is, or what the O2 is, because they live in another country and they have their own arenas and their own, you know, places. So perhaps they're not, some people might not know that Manchester is a long way away from London. Oh, you think you're sure you're not thinking too deeply into this? No, I've never thought deeply into anything. Apart from when I uh, go to Subway and try and decide whether to, you know, those sauces they have. So I can always kind of choose what I want to have in the Subway sandwich or roll, whatever you want to call it a foot long but it's the sauces I can never just start which one do I want do I want peri peri do I want just oh, which one which one I think the problem is the only one I know is peri peri I don't know the names of any of the other ones but I think they're in different coloured tubes not tubes but you know like containers with um that can squirt the stuff out. There's a few different ones, maybe one's mayonnaise, that that would make sense. So I don't I don't have mayonnaise, not not a not a huge fan of mayonnaise. I do like salad cream. I'm like I really, really really like salad cream especially on with chips salad cream and chips is beautiful it's it's you know it's a disco was it a disco in my mouth I don't know it's kind of it's it's just nice I don't know why I like it so much. I don't think before, like when I was younger, like young, young, I didn't used to have salad cream. But then in 2001, when I started working for an insurance company, I was working in a team, so there was a table, and there was a, how many people was there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, between eight and ten people, probably of us, working in the, in the team. And every now and then we'd go out to the pub and have lunch but I think at that time it was a small team then it got bigger when they started recruiting more people and yeah so I, I'm trying to think who was there so there was the team leader there was my friend, then there was at least two others, 
maybe three. So there's about five of us. So we go to this pub. It wasn't, it wasn't next door to where we worked. And there was a pub that was only like a few doors up. We didn't go there because I don't think they served food. So we went up the hill to a pub, and I don't remember the name of it, but they served burgers and stuff like that, and that's what we would have. And the good thing about it is, because we were with the team leader, our boss, is we could go back late to work without getting into trouble. which happened a couple of times really more because of the it was lunchtime and it you know it was, they were busy in there and we didn't get our food uh quick enough to eat it in time quick enough to get back to work quick enough and so to have a couple of pints of lager and uh, burger and chips. I don't remember anything else. Maybe a little bit of salad. Perhaps a yeah. Perhaps a like onion rings or something like that. Because if I was at home. I would probably have um, baked beans, but when I'm out, maybe when I'm out on my own, I would ask for baked beans in a cafe or something such as like that. But for some reason, I never order baked beans when I'm out with company. I don't know why, really. i tell you what I do like baked beans with. KFC. And, uh, although I haven't had a KFC for years, actually. There's a new one being built it's not close to where I live, it is a bus ride. It's a bus ride or an hour and a half walk. And uh, I wouldn't walk an hour and a half to go to her son to eat. I wouldn't walk an hour and a half to marry a princess. I, you know, I just, it's too, just too far. There's a limit. I think 50 minutes, for me 50 minutes is a limit. If anything takes longer than 50 minutes to get to, then it's it doesn't exist. It's uh, just a rule of thumb that I live by. It's, uh, it's a shame because the amount of pots of gold that have just been like 52 minutes away, and I just kind of, I could see it, but you know, I look at my clock, I've been walking 50 minutes, I just gotta walk couple of hundred yards or a hundred yards and that pot of gold would be mine and you know no nah, I just gotta walk back keep to your principles you know the baked beans with the KFC are really nice a bit hot sometimes sometimes not very hot and when I was, I think it was 2011, I lived, yeah, my university course finished in 2010. I got my, what do they call it? You know, when you go and you dress up and you collect your diploma or you know, your degree certificate. Oh, I forget what it's called. But I did that in November 2010. 
and then January 2011 I got evicted well I got the evic eviction letter from my landlord or landlady um, and so I moved eventually I managed to move out but I had to get I got some storage in the yellow building or whatever it's called it's like a, a place where you can rent some storage room where you can store things and I rented a place out for I had it in there for about four or five months and I put all my books and it was mainly just books really so that when I did find somewhere to live I could just take my clothes you know just literally take a not a suitcase but just it, everything was kind of already moved in a sense but uh, I remember I got this got this room and I was trying to find places but I just I, did, I didn't have I couldn't find anywhere and it's like oh but then eventually I found something and it was a I think it was on a website rooms for rent or rooms to let or something like that and it was this ensuite bedroom in this big house I say big it was quite high I mean it's very unlikely that you're going to kick your football onto the roof it's was, it was got a bit too high for that and there is as you go in there turn left there is a kitchen and the kitchen was an okay sized kitchen it's that's a lot bigger than my kitchen but it's not big enough for the amount of people that were living there I suppose it would be big enough if it was a family which was what that house was built for it was a family house it wasn't built for occupancy multiple occupancy because the facilities just didn't uh, you know the walls were really thin and it just didn't work it just the plumbing and there was too much activity in there for you know than would normally be happening you know as couples living in there so it wasn't built for the amount of people but the kitchen was okay but I never really used the kitchen because um I know I just I spent so many years cooking in kitchens and sort of sharing a kitchen with someone and sharing a fridge and a freezer and only being able to buy enough stuff for a couple of days or because other people were also using the same space and you know sink full of dishes and the oven maybe being used so waiting for someone else to finish using the oven and the amount of times that I've put something in the oven and somebody's come along and changed the heat of the oven put their own stuff in as well so I go down to collect my things or I've left it in for 20 minutes come down and it's hardly cooked because they've turned the oven down to like 180 instead of 200 and then they put their casserole in there which was cold taking away all the heat out of the oven that had built up during 
the time that my particular food item was in the oven up to that point and yeah I had many years of that not not that one incident didn't last for many years you know the casserole went off eventually but uh, yeah the yeah so I just it was a nice kitchen but I didn't really use it and so walking in I don't feel there's anything on the right hand side but if you go if it went straight alright there was there was the stairs that went up and then there was a toilet downstairs toilet which was next to the stairs and then further up there was like a like a sitting room diner which is again really nice a good size if you had a little family um, and there was a garden out the back again fairly good size if you had a little family it was nice a nice house for a family uh, if you had a couple of little kids it's you know it could have been nice a nice area close to town and but the living room wasn't really used because I don't know if you if you rent a room in my experience if you rent a room then that's your room and although I did make a couple of videos in there in the living room but yeah it wasn't yeah I didn't it was it was kind of one of those buildings that was really nice but at the same time it wasn't it's a weird one really so going up the stairs there is what was it there was one room on the right which was the same as mine so a double room so it's a, a big room with an ensuite There was a room next to it, which was straight ahead as you go up the stairs. And that was a big room as well, but there was no one suite. It was just just a big a big room with a, and there was a double bed in there. And then next to that, on the left-hand side, and there was a much smaller room. But it was still, I think, big enough for a double bed, but it was a small room. And then you go up the stairs again. And then go up some more stairs, and that was where I lived. And as you go up there, there was my room on the right. Next to my room, there was a bathroom which the people that lived in the rooms without an ensuite bathroom would use. And then turn left to go up and there was two rooms. Um, one was an ensuite as well. That was parallel to my room. And then there was a room next to it, which was just a, like another small-ish room like the one downstairs. So there was six rooms, six bedrooms, and one bathroom and one toilet at the bottom. And then there was I'm trying to think, we had a few different people who lived there. I was only there for like a year, I think. But there was 
I was uh, when I moved in there is a man living there on the right hand side room as you come in and he was singing a lot and then he, he moved out to go and work on uh, I don't know ships you know sort of uh, I don't know tourist ships you know playing just going on and doing cabaret and stuff I think the room next to him which was the just like a big room that was the lady that would clean the house she got paid to clean the house and other places and then on the left hand side there was a room that I don't know if anyone was living in there at the time when I moved in then upstairs it's my room on the right which was en suite and opposite me on the right hand side there was a couple living there a young couple and on the left there was a young man moved in student no there wasn't he wasn't there no there was uh, there was no one in there but I think after about a week or two no maybe there was but there was uh, yeah there was a couple moved in there as well another young couple so when I moved in there was including me there was one two one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people living in six bedrooms. Does that make sense? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Anyway, people moved around, and I think the couple living upstairs, one of the couples moved out, and then cause they were always arguing and stuff, and then. Uh, uh, a man moved in there the couple living next to them I thought the man living below me the ocean who left to become a singer in a on an ocean liner thing he left and the couple upstairs moved down to his room oh originally yeah the lady living in the middle room, she was living in the small room. So she moved, so whoever was living in that middle room, I don't remember, she moved into there. And then a couple of girls moved in to that room. So at that point there was me one two three four five six seven eight eight people living there and then the two females moved out and a man moved in there into that room the two people living underneath me they moved out and the lady who cleaned the place then moved into that room so she had an ensuite. a man moved into the room that she'd been in and yeah 
yes, all the rooms were still full. And then I moved out. I was so grateful to get out of there. Just, it was just too expensive really, but I didn't have cooking facilities that I felt comfortable using. So for most of the time there, I was eating sandwiches and takeaways. And I think I cooked twice actually used the kitchen twice in the year that I lived there and one of my favourite things to do on a Sunday afternoon was to walk into town which was only a short journey go to the KFC get myself a big bucket of like a mixture of everything with sweet corn, baked beans and you know all that stuff come home and watch I think at that point I was watching was it Game of Thrones I think it was when Game of Thrones just first started and I'd be watching that on the computer and oh, it was lovely Anyway, that's my story of KFC. My story of that room. All oh, these other stories actually, but I'll tell you another time. Take care and I'll speak to you very soon. <laughs>